Hello, and welcome to Pet Central Media, a revolutionary media concept designed especially for you. I'm Emma. And I'm David. And we're here to tell you some exciting news about Pet Central. The pet care concept, which aims to meet the growing demand for the latest, most popular pet products and world-class professional pet care. Pet Central creator Dr. Pauline Taylor aims to meet the challenge of this global surge in pet care and pet welfare at home and abroad. The core concept of Pet Central is really to get everything for a pet owner or a pet parent nowadays together under one umbrella. So as vets we can advise people and if we can't advise them ourselves we can at least direct them to the professional in that area be it for grooming or for training or, or what's best at different stages in, in their life cycle. Pet Central Media, the complete pet service concept that brings you care from the heart. Hi, I'm Dr. Pauline Taylor. Welcome to our veterinary question and answers. We have a great question today. Dr. Rianne Kwok is going to give you her answer. It is definitely not normal to have bad breath in a dog and there are a variety of causes. The most common cause will be periodontal disease, which means disease of the gum lines. This is due to a collection of bacteria overload in the gum line, causing an infection of the gums. This can be sometimes very, very painful, but in a dog, most likely they will mask the pain and they will still continue to eat. So the best thing to do is to bring your pet to the, see the vet and so that we can do a thorough exam of the oral cavity to make sure there isn't any plaque building up or there's any obvious inflammation of the gum lines. If that's the case, Often, if we can do a dental procedure and anesthesia, this can cure the problem. There are other causes, such as metabolic disease like renal disease, the kidney disease, or diabetes that can cause a funny breath, but these needs a thorough blood test and an exam as well. So I think the best thing to do is to find out the cause of this problem by seeing the vet. tips to keep your dog safe and happy during Halloween.
Halloween is a fun day for kids, but sometimes it can be a little trying for dogs. Chocolate and certain kinds of candy can be highly toxic for your dogs, so keep all candy and all chocolate away from your dog. Lock it away in a secure cupboard where it's kept completely away from your dog. Chocolate has a toxic chemical in it called theobromine. And when dogs ingest chocolate, all sorts of terrible things can happen, including cardiac problems, trouble breathing, and for very, very worst cases, even death. So keep chocolate away from your dog. Some candy has artificial sweeteners in it as well, which are also very, very dangerous for your dog. So the best thing to do is after you come home with your Halloween candy, is to put it in a secure place where your dog can't get to it. Dressing up on Halloween is great, and of course, some people like to dress their dogs up, but please be mindful of how your dogs feel about the dressing up process. There are some dogs that are fine with being dressed up, but others find it really stressful having clothes put on them that feel different, that smell different, and make the dog feel and walk awkwardly. If you're gonna dress up your dog, do it just for a little bit of time, take a few photographs, and then take it off. Your dog will be much happier for it. Be mindful that if you're having trick-or-treaters coming to your front door to put your dog away in a back room because all different kinds of people, weird looking costumes, strange face masks can all be scary for your dog. It doesn't just protect your dog, but it also protects the strangers coming to your door as well. If your dog doesn't mind being dressed up, it's probably better that you don't take your dog trick-or-treating because again, being out on the streets where a lot of other people are dressed up, funny costumes, weird face masks, could cause your dog to be frightened. Also, if there are other dogs on the street and they see your dog in some weird kind of costume, costumes and clothing can actually mask vital body signals and can stop a dog from communicating appropriately and other dogs understanding what your dog's trying to tell them. During Halloween, keep your dog indoors, away from the candy. You go out and enjoy yourself and your dog's gonna be much happier without a costume on at home. And that's how you can keep your dog safe and happy during Halloween. Just like people, dogs suffer with the pain of arthritis. Newer pain relief drugs are now available. The benefits of these drugs have been proven, and new research and experience trials are showing great results. It's been reported that up to one in five of our dogs suffer from arthritis. And just like us, they want relief from their discomfort. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, approved specifically for pets, have had a big impact in veterinary medicine. Similar to NSAIDs for people, these drugs bring a great deal of promise to dogs suffering from arthritis. Knowing how NSAIDs like ibuprofen have helped them, many owners have eagerly accepted their veterinarian's recommendation to try the NSAIDs approved for their pets. By blocking key enzymes in the cell, NSAIDs stop inflammation, which in turn lessens the pain and discomfort of arthritis. For most dogs, this treatment helps greatly in easing their pain. Although these drugs can cause problems, following your veterinarian's advice might reduce the side effects. Routine blood screens and regular rechecks are very important. The good news is that the focus of the newer NSAIDs is on safety while maintaining good pain relief for the pet. With millions of dogs affected by arthritis in the United States and Canada, pet owners are anxious to find a safe medication that will help their pets. These newer NSAIDs may just be what the doctor ordered. Some of the adverse reactions to these medications are due to incorrect dosing by the pet owners trying to make their pets more comfortable. You should always follow your veterinarian's instructions. Also, never mix these drugs or use them with over-the-counter medications. I'm Dr. Jim Humphreys reporting.
Pets Talk. Stay tuned for that and more on Pet Central. I'm Dr. Pauline Taylor. Welcome to our veterinary question and answers. We have a great question today. I'm going to answer this question. Playtime is such an important time in your dog's day. The manners of playtime, though, are learned when your dog is young in its critical socialization period. And it's so important that pups get to play with other pups around their own age and learn what to do and what they can't do when they're playing. You're right to be worried because your dog could be hurt if it tries to play roughly with another dog and that dog may get afraid, it may get very defensive, it may get very aggressive and it may turn and attack your dog because it's actually protecting itself. Lots of training can go into playtime and I suggest you look at this very, very carefully. Maybe you have to find some other puppy playmate or you have to find a trainer who can discuss and advise you how your dog learns to play better with other dogs of its own age and own size. The most important thing of this is to new puppy owners, get them to puppies play group. Get them playing with other puppies from a very, very young age. And at that age, they will learn the correct rules and manners to playing with other dogs. If you doubt that in any way, just watch a documentary about a pack of wolves. And you'll see how wolves, how wolf puppies play with each other. And you may think it's a bit tough and they're loud and they're yelping. But at the end of the day, you'll see how nicely these wolves develop into nice, pack animals. What we want with your dog is that anytime it meets another dog it knows exactly what it should and what it shouldn't do during that playtime. Patrick,他是Bunny,这里是Pet 我们要让这只狗跟这只狗一起走，走得很舒服，走得很舒服，走得很舒服，走得很舒服，走得很舒服，走得很舒服，走得很舒服，走得很舒服，走得很舒服，走得很舒服，走得很舒服，走得很舒
Whenever you're having two dogs greeting for the first time, always make sure it's on neutral territory. That's why we've come out to this park. Altercations can happen when you bring the new dog right onto the existing dog's territory without any warning whatsoever, or your friend brings around her dog onto your dog's territory. Introducing dogs on neutral ground, take them off leash. When dogs are off leash, they have more of the ability to act naturally, more than they do when they're on the leash. Go run, go, go run, go play, go on. When the dogs are playing like this, really important just to monitor their play. If you think that one dog is maybe overpowering the other, then you can intervene. Now Jasmine's female dog chases a male dog. Now you see the break and play, this is really important. There was a break and play and what, what Chase is doing is Chase is showing Jasmine his behind. When he shows her the behind, that's a kind of play with me gesture. It's basically showing the non-bitey end to her so that she doesn't have to be scared of him. When dogs are playing really well with each other, you'll see that there are moments of stillness. There are always brief pauses, brief moments during play where the dogs will either shake off, they'll sniff, they'll do something else, or they'll offer a play bow or something to each other. Now you can see both dogs are checking back in with us. This is really important too, to give them confidence when they do come back and check in. You say good and then send them on their way again. Even though she's barking, I'm still going to allow her to go up. This is Amy's other dog, James Dean. Jasmine was a little bit afraid of him to begin with because he's a lot of a bigger dog. Now, if it gets to the point now where you think you can let the dogs off, you think it's safe to do so. So really maintain both dogs whilst they're off leash. And if things get too much, especially for the little dog, then obviously call the dogs back to you. Um, put them back on leash so as not to overwhelm any of them. If the dogs don't want to play together, that's absolutely fine. Just as long as they're just hanging out and existing in the same area and nothing bad is happening, the dogs don't have to play with each other. Socialization, when two dogs are socializing with each other, doesn't necessarily mean that the dogs have to touch each other. Socialization is also about just being in somebody's presence. I don't use toys at the moment, I don't throw sticks, I don't do anything, because while the dogs are getting to know each other, I want them just to hang out with each other. Amy has two dogs and I didn't want to overwhelm Jasmine by making her have to greet both dogs at the same time. So what I like doing is to allow the dog to greet each dog separately. And then when the new dog that you're introducing is comfortable with both dogs by themselves, then you can have both dogs together. Oh Hello. Now, I think it's okay to let them all off. All right. Look at that. Look how she gives, look how she gives the butt to him too. Mm -hmm. It's such great language. <coughs> James got a little bit feisty with the two dogs playing with each other. So Amy just called him off. And that's what you can do with your dogs. Don't forget that when you've introduced dogs to each other in neutral territory and then you go home, if you're having a dog that you're introducing to your family for good, make sure that those dogs are fed separately, at least for the first couple of weeks. Toys are given to them separately and chew time is separately. Every dog is going to need to have space away from each other for parts of the day. Make sure that good things happen to each dog when they're in each other's presence and also take them out for a walk. Doing great physical exercise and great fun activities with your dogs will really help their relationship grow.
Whether it's a rock or a stick or even an occasional light bulb, strange things are showing up in our pets' stomachs. As you will see, our pets, especially dogs, seem to have a taste for some pretty bizarre items. It may seem unlikely and certainly unappetizing, but objects like this seven inch steak knife are routinely removed from the stomachs of our pets. Even more surprising, our pets seem to recover without any lasting effects. In a recent contest, x-rays from across the country were reviewed for the oddest and most unusual objects eaten by pets. Common items include sticks, as in this case of a stick over a foot long. Clothing, pantyhose, and other soft items are quite common, and even rocks like this one. Another popular find, fishing weights and lures. In this case, more than nine pounds of fishing weights in this dog's stomach. The more unusual items include marbles, toys, light bulbs, Christmas ornaments, and in the case of a seven-month-old pit bull terrier, this full phone cord. So why do our pets seem to be so fascinated with these weird objects? Obviously, items with a food scent on them might be mistakenly swallowed. But what about objects such as coins or marbles? Well, no one really knows. Veterinarians do advise that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Keep garbage cans secure behind closed doors and help avoid scavenging behavior by not feeding people food to your pets in the first place. And watching your pet while exploring the outdoors is a must. Many outdoor activities might bring your pet into contact with debris, large sticks, glass, and metal fragments. Being aware of what your pet is tasting could save your pet's life and even help avoid a hit to your pocketbook. Luckily, all these stories had happy endings. Each pet left the hospital the next day wagging their tails, thanks to the skills of the family veterinarian and the whole healthcare team. Now, you cat owners should be concerned as well. Strings and rubber bands can be very deadly to cats and kittens. I'm Dr. Jim Humphreys reporting. Who doesn't love a puppy or a kitten? But be sure to consult your vet before bringing home your new best friend. I'm Dr. Pauline Taylor. Welcome to our veterinary question and answers. We have a great question today, especially for Dr. Kurt Perkais. Dr. Kurt will answer this question. So the reason that Scottish Fold have health problems is the same reason that their ears fold over. Their ears fold over because they have abnormal cartilage. Cartilage is the soft, the soft parts of bones and in the ears, the cartilage normally holds the ears up prick. Um, and in Scottish Fold, they fold over. But the problem is that they also have cartilage problems everywhere else that cartilage happens, including in all of the bones. Um, as part of the process of growing a bone, the cartilage changes to bone over time, and the cartilage is abnormal in, in, um, in Scottish Fold. So they end up with misshapen bones. Also, cartilage persists in joints, uh, and in joints it's important for joint function to allow joints to move smoothly. And when the cartilage there is abnormal, you end up with arthritis or misshapen joints that can't work very well. So as a result of that, many Scottish Fold cats have problems with normal movement uh, or with joints.
Saying goodbye to our family pet can be a very traumatic event. You might be surprised at the length some folks will go to remember their pets. It happens in almost every pet owner's lifetime. A beloved pet has reached the end of life and hard decisions need to be made. Euthanasia is a painless step to relieve a pet of suffering. Although many pet owners realize the end is near, some have trouble letting go. Others say their pet lets them know when the time was right. Either way, euthanasia can be a blessing. But what about afterwards? Some owners feel the need for closure and opt for a funeral or even a memorial service for their pet. While some might chuckle at this idea, more than 600 pet cemeteries and crematories across North America offer these services. Packages range from a simple locket of hair captured in a picture frame to a full-blown visitation complete with engraved invitations, a casket, and burial plans. Pet funeral experts say that many families aren't content with the final visit at the veterinarian's office. Memorial services offer a chance for everyone to come together and celebrate the pet's life. Cremations, along with a wide selection of urns and keepsakes, have become very popular as a means to remember your pet. And although it's less common, pet cemeteries can offer your pet a final resting place. Granite markers and headstones are also available. Grieving for a pet is a normal part of dealing with the loss. Pet loss support lines have been set up in most states and can help you find peace in the memories of your friend. These options become very important as owners realize that local laws may prohibit them from burying their pet in the backyard. I'm Dr. Jim Humphreys reporting. dog to go into his crate by teaching him a few words such as go to bed. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do that. You can actually teach your puppy to go into his crate on cue. And this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to place a treat in the crate and as puppy goes in I'm going to give the cue go to bed. Go to bed. Good boy. Good boy. You can actually see that he's working out so quickly that this is where the good stuff happens. So he just stayed in his crate for a couple of seconds to see if he would get anything else. Go to bed. Good boy. Now I use a lure with my hand in the crate with a treat coming through with my hand here. And I'm going to tell him to go to bed. Let's see if he can work it out. As he goes into the crate, I'm going to give him the cue word so he begins to associate the action of going in the crate with the, with the word. Let's watch him work out how he's going to get that piece of food. He's got to go in his crate to go get it. As he's going to go into his crate, I'm going to tell him to go to bed. Go to bed. Good boy. Good boy. Nice. Go to bed. Good boy. After repeating this a couple of times, you're just going to use your hand as the lure without a treat in there. Go to bed. Good boy. Now he's just going to get praise. Good boy. <laughs> 